Hello, my dear ones. Always, always love to come and talk with you and share with you the things we're learning and experiencing. And I love to hear all your stories. It's just some fantastic stories out there. Look what you guys are doing. You guys are changing the globe. You're changing the way people perceive health. You are opening up spiritually and, and your friends. It's just, it's going to be a better place to walk. Yeah. Well, I thought I'd get on some more Q&A. I know you like subject matters, but I think that uh, I still want to do some Q&As. I picked up a couple from Chris earlier and some really good cases, serious cases. And if anything, these are good videos to show you different cases and what you would do with those cases. Now, I don't lay out every protocol for each case because that's there's so much redundancy. Because keep in mind, when you open the door to pain and suffering, you're opening your door to acid chemistry. You're opening the door to the great lymphatic system, of which man knows very little about and is still discovering it. But as you pull back, it's easy to understand the sewer system of the human body. When you combine the sewer system with the acids, then you start to understand why everything's the way it is. Why cholesterol and the lymph system is lipid-based how much more powerful that is in the neutralization or the control of acids and that pH factors. So uh, when, you, when you step back, you can see a lot more than a lot of times when you pull in too much. Pulling in too much means that you're starting to leave the world of, of truth and, and synergistic uh, relationships into the world of isolates, uh, separation, the mind, uh, theories, things like that. And man doesn't need to work with any more theories with health. We already demonstrated the levels you can get. And we just tweak here, tweak there. And you guys have an incredible system on the planet to get people from Hellville to Wellville. So it's good stuff. Uh, let me see here. This is from Paul. Hey, Paul. Uh, hi, Doc. Hope you are well. Feel well. Uh, my dad is suffering from chronic anxiety depression, and insomnia for at least six years now. Lost interest in everything and doesn't like leaving the house. At the beginning, he was uh, prescribed I thought it was going to be Cipro, but it's uh, Cidol, Oparim, something like that, and Propanol, uh, Propanol, but my dad didn't like them and stopped. He was later discharged for the last three years, he has cataracts in both and glaucoma, pressure in the right eye, and has particularly lost his, practically lost his sight, right? He has some sort of laser treatment to try and fix the pressure. What can be done? Thanks. All right, so let's look at this because this is an important case. I feel sorry for the dad, but take a look at these three things. Anxiety depression, and insomnia. Each one of these symptoms come from endocrine glands, specific endocrine glands. So let's back up a minute. Anxiety, that's your emotional gland, that's your adrenal glands. Okay, so anxiety, adrenals. And he would have to have the adrenals gl glands down to have the last of this, but let's wait. Let's look at the next thing, depression, another endocrine gland. Which one? Oh, you guys are good. Parathyroid gland. When you're not utilizing calcium because of a parathyroid weakness and low parathormone, you are going to find depression. And we talked a lot about this with poor women in postpartum depression. When they have parathyroid weaknesses, no one ever talks about that with them. They start having babies. The baby starts stealing mama's calcium and mama ends up with postpartum depression. Or worse, like in Andrea Yates' case where she drowned five of her babies and basically hallucinated. So you can get pretty bad with low calcium levels in the body because calcium is a main component in so many functions, including neurotransmission. 
So we're now at the parathyroid gland. Now, what's the third thing here? We got anxiety, adrenals, depression, parathyroid, insomnia. That's the pineal gland, the spiritual gland, the tisratil, the third eye. That is the pineal, the gland of rest and sleep of spirituality. So that's down. So his melatonin levels are down. You could take melatonin, which people do, but that's a hormone. Again, you'll weaken the pineal gland. So what's up here? We've got these three glands are down. These three glands are down. All right. Now, what might, what would be a very, very, very easy stretch for us to make without any eyes? Pituitary. Pituitary. You're right there with the pineal. And if you look above the eyes, right at the 12 o'clock, you've got the pituitary and the pineal right there kissing cousins. So, you know also to have that, you have to have some colon problems because that, that area of the, of the body sits on top of the transverse bowel, believe it or not. So, we can tell you right off that your dad probably has a pituitary weakness. He definitely has a parathyroid, and my guess a little thyroid to kaboot. He's got an adrenal gland that's down, right? Now, let's, let, let's see some of the other side effects, because these are the endocrine glands. Those symptoms are endocrine glands. All right, so let's go a little deeper here. What we have is cataracts, all right? Well, what we have is a lot worse than cataracts. By the time you see cataracts, you're in big trouble with what? Cholesterol. Cataracts are cholesterol. But when they, be, when they start building up interstitially in the eye tissue, guess where else? cholesterol is being deposited. Absolutely. In, in the vascular walls. And the reason? Acidosis. Acidosis. And you know how we can prove that? What's the next symptom? Glaucoma. Now, glaucoma is lymphatic pressure, not blood pressure, lymphatic pressure. You can't laser this away. You can't play these kind of games. These are games that children's play that hurt other people. This is a whole system that's down, and you see it's right-sided, more so with the glaucoma, knowing that that right side, that's that right kidney of his. And that whole side is problematic. So that's, that's where you have to take off and take a look at this. His lymph is down because his kidneys and adrenals are down. Because of that, he has pressure in the right eye, probably a little in the left. Uh, you've got cataracts because of the acidosis. This is inflammation. Uh, you've got the pineal gland, the down. You've got the parathyroid down, and you've got the adrenals down. So how do you turn everything on? How do you turn all these things back on? Well, you have to remember that there's two fluid-based systems that touch every cell in your body. You have the blood-based system. That's your nutritional kitchen of the human body. That you're going to change because you're going to move from acidic forming uh, dead animal meats and grains and beans and, and all the crap, cooked crap, to a fruit and berry and melon lifestyle for a little while. Energize, turn on. If you want to add some greens, okay, but stay with a high level of fruits, berries, and melons. So the first thing you're doing is you're beginning to bring in electrolytes, electricity from all of that, uh, proper pH balance for the blood, uh, astringent values. So now your body's going to start uh, hydrating, astringing. All of these things are starting to loosen you up and get more flow to the fluids. What's the other fluid? That is the lymphatic fluids. 80% of this interstitial fluid is, is lymphatic fluids. Only 20% is actually blood. So you can see that the sewer system slash immune system slash lubricating system slash blah, 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 lipid carrier system, that is a major system, according to God, because it's 80% of interstitial fluid where blood is only 20. But it also gives you an indication why we have to keep the blood so nice. And the only way to keep the blood nice is to eat the foods that are blood foods, fruits, berries, melons, much more than even vegetables. They keep the blood viscosity perfect, the pH perfect. So fruits are 
key, key, key to this whole scenario with him in terms of detoxification, getting the kidneys to filter, because to get pressure out, that means you have to have blockages. Well, which system's blocked? Well, again, we're to glaucoma, we're to the lymph, we're at the lymph pressure. So that means you, your dad has a blockage. Well, we all know, after all these videos, where the blockages are with the dad. The blockages are in the kidneys, but the adrenals are down because he has anxiety, so that takes you right there to that doorway, right? Now, we can also suggest that there's probably a little thyroid down, so you might want to look at your dad and see if he's sweating. Because if he's not sweating, that means his skin is down as well. That's the third kidney. So that means all three kidneys are down. That means that all the metabolic waste that the body's developing, or most of it, is being held within the system. Well, you can't hold sewage long, can you? You ever see the strike in New York City of the sanitation department and nobody's picking up the garbage for a couple of weeks? Yeah, it starts to back up, right? You know, there's magic, but this isn't, you know, the acids just don't disappear magically. This is a whole process of neutralizing, eliminating, and uh, bacterial breakdown and everything like that. So, you can see right off that you've got to go right to the focus that you know to be true. You're going to go to the kidneys. You're going to go to the adrenal glands. You're going to go to the GI tract. You're going to go to the endocrine glands. I myself am I'm going to do probably initially an adrenal 400 to this guy. Uh, that's, a, that's a glandular, and I'm probably going to do two, three times, or one, three times a day with that one, 400 milligrams, one, three times a day. I'm going to put them on two kidney formulas. I'm going to put them on two lymphatic formulas. Remember, one capsule, one liquid. I'm going to put them on, I'm going to deworm him. So I'm going to put them on the first kit to deworm him and all. And then I'm going upper sir, because you know he's got cholesterol placking, and you want to save your dad from strokes or heart attacks. So upper circulation would be mandatory in my book. So you want to give him upper circulation. Uh, probably wouldn't hurt to give him a little brain and nerve to enhance that if he's older. Uh, for sure, you will clean out the liver, gallbladder, you're going after the bowels. Uh, I'm going to probably do a pituitary herbal formula. At the same time, I'm going to do a parathyroid glandular, 50 milligrams, and I'm going to do one to two. Depends how bad his parathyroid and depression is. I could do two easy because there's four parathyroid glands. I could do two of the 50 milligrams pretty easy. So I would do two, three times a day. If he has knees and, and hips and stuff like that, hitchhike it with the bones formula. Or hitchhike it with a superfood blend, some high calcium blend that you want to pull him up out of depression, but also you want to do some mending. The other thing you have to understand is getting this cholesterol out. These are cataracts, but it's also uh, placking in the brain as well. It just doesn't plaque in the, uh, in the eye. It plaques in the brain as well. And lucky if it's not in the coronaries either. So you just want to open everything up. To get to the cholesterol is a lymphatic Thing, but to enhance the vascular system, to to dilate and get better blood flow, you use the circulation formulas to help with someone that is, you know, possibility of a stroke or a heart attack. When you see glaucomas, when you see particularly cataracts, and they having cholesterol problems, they're placking. So you want to protect your your people with circulation formulas. At the same time, you're going to nail that lymphatic system. You're going to go after that GI tract, GI broom, and all this because you know to have this, they have to have some transverse bowel involvement. There's a connection, a symbiotic connection here. So that's where you'd want to be going. You know, get it, get on your dad like this and get going. And not even view this video because I don't care how old he is, everybody can change. And let's say, and let's say you enjoy suffering, and your dad is uh, some serious things here waiting to happen here. If the cataracts, he's going to lose his vision, uh, strokes, things like this. He can get all that back. He can get his vision back. He can get all this back without surgeries and all this. But he has to get up on the world of regenerative detoxification. Yeah, that's all right. What's your green crystal? What do you need? Isn't that beautiful green crystal? Actually, put that on the video and tell them what it is. This green crystal? Yeah. Somebody asked the question. Mm -hmm. yeah. Oh, did they? Yeah. I got this from Micah, a shaman. And it just, uh, he had, he had, uh, he works with the spiritual guides and they had told him to give me a little green crystal. So he gave me one. And I have a bite right where I do all these protocols and everything to just give energy to everybody. But he said, Check what I because he was he did a uh, crystal healing workshop at our level one, 
and he said, check this one. And it said under the uh, uh, John of God, it said, it said under him for six months or something, and you can feel the energy in this thing. Yeah. It's just, a, it's a cool piece. Everybody yeah, right. wants to touch it. It's just, it's an incredible piece. Isn't that incredible piece? It's just beautiful stuff. Quartz and how they have the different colored quartzes. Yeah, I'm unlimited in my understanding of that, between the differences of that, the quartz, you know, and all that. Yeah, but it is quartz, right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I guess. I mean, it's total crystal. It's a pretty cool stuff. Cool. Sorry, right, thank you. I'll tell them to watch the video. Okay. <laughs> so that's what I would do. And you want to, you know, your dad wants to get onto that because, you know, we, we humans take things unseriously. And I have another take since I've been in this chair for 40 some years. Take things very seriously because you, your quality of life and expression that your body allows you to have here is up for grabs. It's not fun to get reclusive and depressed and unhappy and, and lead a shallow life like that. You're, you're put here to, to open up and to enjoy and to, and to conquer and to, to do. This is creation. God didn't put us here to mope around. So as we turn everything around and, and teach people how to turn on their endocrine glands and start having a life, then the world will change. But your dad needs to change his diet, get himself focused, and get take care of these endocrine glands because those are all the ones that have any... Uh, you can't sleep, you're depressed, and you have anxieties. That's about the worst it gets. So, uh, be careful with that. Hmm. I have met several young people, teens and early 20s lately. Now, this is interesting. All who have seizures. <laughs> I was wondering if you could please do a YouTube video on what causes these and how to detox them. I know in babies it is often associated with vaccines, but in teens, what is going on? Much love, Susan. Ah, oh, Steve's sister. Yeah, Susan, I just talked to your brother earlier today, the, the guy that wrote the book Meg and all the books, and uh, matter of fact, uh, I think, Bell, they're working on a movie, Meg movie, uh, right now. But, uh, yeah, Susan, you know what? The sad thing is, and remember we talked a lot about the fact that these young these young people are coming in with weak adrenals, weak kidneys, their low blood pressures and all this. So there are several things that you can look at here for seizures in teens. Number one, very low neurotransmitters, which is low blood pressure, low myelin sheaths, and subjected to neurotoxicity. Could be simple marijuana, could be uh, uh, any other kind of uh, narcotic type of drug, could be pharmaceuticals, big time, could be surgeries, it could be pesticides and herbicides. You know, this is part of the problems with going raw. We have to also be careful of the chemicals involved. So anything that's a neurotoxin, and that's what you see in vaccines, thimerosal, the neurotoxin that and I've got case after case of infants after four months after that vaccine right into seizures. When you have a society that doesn't look at that and allows these chemicals on the market and allows that and allows their children to be subjected to these things that causes seizures, and that's just part of the picture. Anybody ever seen vaccines gone wrong on some of these kids? Uh, it, it's not the, the, it, it's it's the most grotesque thing you've ever seen. So there's so much hype around vaccination. Pharmaceutical companies are just raking this stuff right in, just raking the dough right in, and they're working with the Zeta by they're they're working on these sort of things. No no looking at what viruses are and of course the effect. I'm still got that in my mind from someone from Brazil that was saying vaccines were causing the uh, head problems. That uh, that sounds a lot more likely than virals. Virals are proteins. They can set up and be nasty in certain ways, particularly if you have weak cells. You know, the weaker your body, the more adhesions protein has to cell membrane walls. But that's all in the event of, of an immune response because in the final analysis, to all things on this planet, the strong survive, the weak are basically terminated. And you just have to understand that. You've got to grab your power and, and, and win the day. And I know I was talking to this poor girl yesterday that had all this serious, uh, you know, rape and everything in her past. And it's like, 
you know you have to pull up and, and just and let those experiences go through you because if you carry these these horrendous problems with us people have carried these things for lifetimes that's some of our problem now is that souls have carried some of these extreme tortures and rapes and stuff for lifetimes so when you go to detoxify them, they go into emotional detox because they're detoxing these old hidden experiences maybe from lifetimes ago. So when you understand that we are travelers in the world of creation, you have to understand that we, we move from one experience to another experience to another experience. We just don't come down and go home. So you start to realize why there is what there is. Cause and effect, you reap what you sow, karma, you start, it all starts to fit in like a glove. You start to realize, why is that person suffering? He didn't do anything this lifetime. So everybody suffers for a reason, like this poor girl went through that, but you don't know what that soul did to other people. Uh, that's what we don't see. And because one doesn't see that, you can see that spiritually by going to the, the Akashic Records of that person. But as a rule, the average person doesn't know anything about that. And actually, most spiritual people don't know anything about that. So it's enough to say that you can see that, but the best thing is to drop it and go. Drop it and go because you're, we're all come packing with bad experiences and we all come packing with good experiences. But these are labels that the mind have given these experiences. We don't, looking at the experiences for what they are and what and why and, and all of that sort of thing. So it's, it's tough. This is a tough uh, area. But if you can understand these few things and how to pull back from the mind and emotions, you'll free yourself from the tyranny uh, of this karmetic wheel that keeps you spinning down here. Because you've got to pay for everything you create. Remember that. You have to pay for everything you create. To think otherwise is um, unawareness. And so it's just the way it is. Everybody pays for everything they create. So the more you create, the more you have to stay and pay uh, or experience. We just don't create things and let them hang out in midair. They don't do that. All right. So, uh, these young, and this is why I keep saying with the younger uh, people out here, uh, you want to always think about your adrenal glands. You always want to think about your brain and nervous system. You always want to think about these things because you guys are the one getting hit pretty bad. We've just come into through a major chemical insult to this planet. If you looked at that, uh, in the from the early 19, actually from the first TV, and then uh, you start seeing it escalating more into the 50s, and then above the 50s, we just fell in love with chemistry. The problem with that is we've created chemistry like plastic that won't be off the planet for thousands of years, and it's toxic. So we've we we have good old boy chemists, and then we've had good bad boy chemists. You know, created gnarly stuff, and the human race has to pay for that. So this is part of the problem that our scientific community sometimes, to me, is like little children playing with things they don't understand and creating hardships for the globe. Bad stuff. And we, we, we just have this, but that's God. Inquiring minds want to know. So, in the young, this is why it's more important that you younger people do not stay away from proteins, stay away from acid food eating. These are all things that can trigger um, seizures. The adrenal glands are involved in the metabolism of most minerals. The parathyroid, of course, involved in calcium. When you, when you have a client that has a lot of seizures, you're going after the parathyroid gland. You're going after the adrenals for manganese and magnesium utilization. Both of those are low. Seizures can take place. So you don't want to supplement with that. I mean, you could. You could supplement with magnesium. Then you push your calcium out and, and, and maybe even a little phosphorus. So the trouble with, with treating with, with isolates is that the world isn't isolates. It, the world is synergistically bound with chemistry. We can pull some apart, but the more you pull apart, the more you open in for more bonding. You just can't break away chemical bonds and not expect rebonding. Oh, no, no, no. When you tear food apart, now you've, you've got everything is magnetism. Everything is ionization. So you, you've got a, a process of rebonding. And that's what you see when you cook foods. You have the rebonding of chemistry. Not the same. 
a cooked vegetable dish is not the same as the same dish raw. Not only uh, energetically, but chemically not the same. So that's the problem is that when we start heating all your water soybeans like your B vitamins are destroyed, no question about that, then all the thing that's oil started heating to the uh, to the to the uh, uh, proteins mostly. But then you you can bond carbs with with uh, or, or carbon with night. I mean, you just start this whole rebonding thing. So to be totally healthy and to keep it simple is you just eat your foods whole. You don't need to supplement. You need to fix the adrenal glands so you have proper metabolism of chemistry. Not that you're trying to play God and supplement chemistry because you still have adrenals that can't metabolize it. It's like zinc deficiency and selenium. People want to take a lot of zinc and selenium because they read it's this and it's that. It's a savior and all this other kind of stuff. The problem is until you fix your adrenal glands, you can't supplement and call it a deficiency. Until you fix digestion, you can't call it a deficiency. Until you fix absorption, you can't call it a deficiency. And then thirdly, of course, as you guys know, you, you can't uh, call it a deficiency until you fix utilization. Once you've fixed all these four processes, digestion, absorption, utilization, and elimination of the waste, then if you're having problems with raw food, you can say, well, maybe my food is deficient, but I've never seen that. So I don't know what to say. You know, it, these are different levels of consciousness. This is a much higher level than, than supplementations, of, of course, by far. Went through that world years and years and years ago. I went through that world even when I owned health food stores. I had my own supplement line made for me. Uh, you know, I've always been an entrepreneur that way. But... Uh, Never have we seen regeneration and the healings as the focus that we have now, where we're actually putting the body into the right chemical balance through the proper foods for the physiology of man, and by using botanicals to help clean and to help restore and rebuild genetic weaknesses. I mean, this is just the way it is. And when you see the simple, nice package that God put there, it's been available for man all along. But on working with seizures, I, I highly recommend our antispasmodic. I use that to try to help them get away from Dilantin and some of these other anti-seizure meds because they're addicting. They, ha they actually cause more problems in long-term use than the others. Where the herbal antispasmodics are antispasmodics or anti-seizures, but it also is nutritive and healing to the neurons. So you've got the best of all worlds when you're going with that. But I would use an antispasmodic. Further, I would use upper circuit and brain and nerve on these children, or these young guys, the gals, depends the age. Uh, at that time, I'm going after the kidneys, I'm going after the adrenals, I'm going after the lymph system. I'm going after the system that robs the body of, of electrolytes, that acidifies the body, that makes the body seize and tremor and everything else. Because tremors, seizures, all of this fall under the acid sky. Same sky everything else falls under. And it's no wonder how simple is that. We only have two skies to look at. One blue and one dark. I like the blue sky. That's the uh, alkaline side. The dark sky of corrosion is the acid sky. And that's how I would go after this. And remember that a diet of fruits and berries, especially the young ones, the diet of fruits and berries and melons will enhance their comprehension and their awareness. It'll, they're antispasmodic in and of themselves. Anything base is going to be antispasmodic. Anything acid is going to be spastic. And of course, the concern is neural toxins. You want to look around where you're, if you have clients, where they are they getting neural toxins for, from pesticides or herbicides? Is it the perfumes? There's a lot of ladies' perfumes that are neural toxic. I can get by, a lady can walk by me and suddenly I get short of breath and I know she's wearing a neural toxic perfume. So there's a lot of neural toxins. This one chemist was in here uh, last year telling me there was over 2,000 neural toxins in the air right now. It's like, what? So that's you know, this is serious stuff. Man doesn't take it serious, and yet he's dying like flies. Amazing. Thanks for the question, Susan. Appreciate it much. It was a good class. I thought it was a good class. Appreciated you come. Uh, this level one was a good class. I thought we had fun at this level one. I tried to have fun at all. 
Oh, dear Dr. Morris, I love your work. I think you are a remarkable man. You are a real angel. Thank you. I love you too, man. Thank you so much. Appreciate that. I am taking the detox kit one and two, almost finished, and now taking kits six and seven. Wow. As advised by Helen, I have also ordered the Heal All Tea. I have been on fruit for the last five weeks, fell off a few times, and had steam leaks. And uh, and Alice, that's not so bad. You did good. You did really good. That's real good. I had a cancerous mole, not medically diagnosed, but you could tell. Uh, black salve has removed it, and it is healing nicely. Yep, that's a nice, you get a nice little black salve there, not a real, real strong one, <laughs> uh, but a nice little one from moles, takes them right off real nice, you know, real nice, it takes the whole thing, right? Any cancer cells, going to pull them out with it, you know. These are cells that have been damaged. How cool is it that an herb knows how to pull the cancer cells, but leaves the healthy cells? Where does that come from? Explain that to me. Because I've used black salve for years, and on benign tumors, I don't get nothing. Amazing, amazing. I mean, it's just a God thing. That's why I'm a God lover. You, it's a consciousness, it's awareness in everything. Things you wouldn't have believed it has awareness. Amazing, 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 amazing. Uh, the mole was right near my C-section scar. Oh, how interesting. Which I do not think is a coincidence. Yeah, I don't either. And it could be that in these areas of weakness, and uh, Jensen talked about this too, in these areas of weakness and of course surgeries, you're going to have the lymphatic system in these areas a little more backed up and a little more compromised. Well, that's sewage. So you're going to see bacteria and fungals. And mold is part of the fungal family. And this, of course, you're going to see moles all over you if you have adrenal gland weakness. If you have blood sugar problems, you're going to have moles all over you because you're fermenting. Because carbohydrates are our, our main food. And having a blood sugar problem means we're going to have a problem with our main food. And of course, that's fermentation. And guess who loves fermentation? The fungal family. Moles, warts, all these kind of people. They're just doing their job. But take Parasite M long enough and, and fix the adrenals and watch your keep simple sugars. They'll all fall off. They'll all fall off. I was 43 weeks... Oh, wow, I was 43 weeks pregnant and wanted a natural birth. However, the hospital oh, somehow got involved. Oh, well, I am very spiritual and I am an EF, a tea therapist. Oh, wow. And believe a baby soul chooses its own birth date and not doctors. Yeah, agreed. Agreed. But we're in a world where the narcissism of that group is pretty high. And uh, I, you know, I don't know what to say about it, but I agree with you totally. The soul that comes into these bodies, that's what you ladies need to start practicing is go within when you're pregnant and ask to talk to the soul and try to get a communication going with that soul. Because you can, this is just another being like yourself. You're supplying a nice little body for it. So this being is coming in to experience this level. What this being has to offer this planet this is exciting times. There's a lot of spiritual beings, you ladies. You're, you spiritual ladies are going to bring in some real powerful souls. Woohoo! I see it every day. Mm -hmm. So, just know that. And we got to get the bodies healthy for these spiritual beings to come through. It's incredible, incredible stuff taking place. Every time they lied and said I was running the risk of stillbirth. Oh, they had no no data to back this, just a scare tactic to turn it into a medical procedure. Isn't that sad? Yeah, that's the, that, that's the ruling by fear. And boy, let me tell you, I've only done that a couple of times. In that uh, I, I try to just, when I've got a case that's... Uh, you know, their, their, their time is very limited here on the planet. Uh, I, I pretty much sit down and tell it like it is. So from that standpoint, I, I, I don't lie or anything like that, but I'm pretty direct. Because, um, you know, we don't need any more lies and bull crap and all this kind of half-truths and stuff. Tell me like it is. We need truth. We need, we, we need honesty and integrity on this planet. We have, we, uh, who knows what's true anymore on this planet? That's how bad it is. I mean, I look at these, these candidates and I look at all this, it's like, oh my God, one thing out of one mouth and another thing out of the other side of the mouth. I mean, it's like, I don't know. All right. So, oh, 
they eventually when I take that with the c-section I was pumped with morphine and had an epidural I felt like my soul was hurting uh, I absolutely detest the medical profession it's just barbaric it is and I hate to say that I know some of you get mad at me with that but stop and look back and focus and look at this whole world of what's going on look how easy it is to save people how easy it is and especially once we feel something and we know what that's going to turn into we get right on it because you have the awareness to know what it is not everybody's going to be a raw foodist not everybody's going to be a fruititarian yeah, we all get that never did ever expect that but when you're in trouble that's when you want to go for the call. You want to take off, get your kidneys working, get all this fixed up, get the humps and, and lumps out, and you're done. You are done. You don't have to sit there with fear and all this crap and, and deal with their whole insanity thinking. You know, you cannot lo any longer go to doctors that can't tell you what's causing the problem, but they'll treat it. That is you walking up to a death sentence or a lot of years of suffering and pain. That's all I got to say. But with that said, there are times we need the medical community. The medical community has been a part of this part of the problem. Now they need to be a big part of the solution because if we need the ER, we need the ER or we're going to have to open up our own naturopathic hospitals because their hospitals are getting so insane with their costs I mean one uh, one night stay uh, 60 grand basically if they keep you overnight uh, you're going to see a bill for around 60 grand what put me up at the hotel and bring me my meals over there then that's only a hundred bucks I mean it's a nightmare and it's just they're getting what they created. Just remember this cause and effect. And you haven't seen the effect yet. The medical profession has not seen the effect that's coming on them. And it's a sad day. I've seen it. And I, I've got to tell you, it's a sad day. But at the same time, these people have been directly responsible for the deaths of millions and millions and millions of people. I mean, let's tell this call it. It's called the truth, the truth, and the, the, all the facts are out there. This isn't guesswork anymore. The facts are out there, and they're scary. And if you choose not to look at them, you choose not to look at them. But we cannot afford to be ostriches with our heads buried in the sand anymore. That's why governments have taken over. We weren't watching. We trusted because we're part. We're God. We trust everything. Big mistake in duality. Uh, the morphine uh, with this the morphine was slowing my contractions and my beautiful son's heart rate yeah that's where you this is where uh, this is where these guys have to be careful ladies because we are seeing these children coming out of the mamas with weak adrenals their parents with weak adrenals we're generations down with weak adrenals so the, a lot of these babies are born with low blood pressures nerve rings their myelin sheaths are weak that's all they need is propofol or something like morphine morphine sulfate thank you sulfur man which will take you right out uh, so these sort of things are bad 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 and what can do it can slow your child's heart rate and stop it and we've whew, We've seen that so many times where children at post surgeries, babies that they put in post surgery, like this this one uh, Pennsylvania baby, they did the knitting procedure on. Uh, <laughs> that guy should have went to jail for the rest of his life for that one. Uh, but just going under propofol, the baby would stop breathing. The second time they couldn't get him back. That was about a month or two after that. But the first time they did get him back. But they didn't understand why. You don't understand why, and you're supposed to be smart and medical doctors. Our YouTubers can tell you why. I mean, when you subject someone to neurotoxicity and they're already weak neurologically, what do you think? You can go into seizures, you can go into MS, Lou Gehrig's, you can go into a whole host of symptoms with labels like that. Seizures, oh, it's, it's a nightmare. You can see where we need to shift in this whole consciousness around to get a much deeper and better understanding of how simple life is here, how simple it is to be well. Not simple in terms of changing your, your habits now. That's a little bit of a trip. But you know, when you have a bad habit, give yourself a hug and go, you know what, I love this body. It's, it's, it's served me while I'm on this rock. I need to take care of it. You know, I need to break these habits that's hurting it. 
And I can speak. I've had bad habits. Remember, I had a sweet tea bad habit. Hurt me bad. So from hindsight, we can all talk. I agree with that one. Okay, so my question. Can my four-and-a-half-month-old son take any herbs to get rid of the morphine? All right, so I would say this. Four-and-a-half months old. Okay, so right now your son needs to be introduced to fruits. Jennifer, who has two of the loveliest, greatest kids, were eating fruit at three months old. So, this is the time to start introducing a little fruit. Nothing real strong, you know, but uh, maybe some uh, golden mangoes. Uh, maybe a little grape and apple juice mixed, you know, and suck on a few grapes and stuff. Maybe the lighter ones. And yes, this will start the fruits. will start cleansing these neural toxins. It will start building. The other thing I would do is a little brain and nerve. Maybe a couple of drops. Bink, bink. And a little juice. You want to shift, unless you're breastfeeding, you want to shift to coconut water or something, get away from formulas, and uh, and play with that. Uh, I like go to cola, great nerve one, but you could use brain and nerve number two. Dink, dink, two drops. You can use anything. Kidneys, two drops. Endocrine glands, two drops. Think about what the baby needs to have to be to be well. Has to have glands that are on working on adrenals, thyroids, parathyroids, pituitaries, thymuses, you know, the whole nine yards, pineals. So you might want to think about building that up a little bit. Look at your own genetic weaknesses and get a good idea what your son's up against. But remember, he's in a downline, so his he's gonna see quicker symptoms than you by at least ten years. Probably. So that's something you want to look at. But you can use some herbs. I would stay away from lymphatic herbs till he's probably about six months to a year. And then I'd probably lymphatic one tincture, two drops. That'll really start pulling these toxins out of him. But till then, the fruit will do it. Uh, I can't tell you about the herbs. It, it, one herb does ten different things. We don't even know what, what one herb all does. That's how, that's how incredible the Creator is. When you make one herb do ten different things, it's like... Oh my God, that is incredible. Uh, you can't say that with pharmaceuticals. You can only say with pharmaceuticals they're suppressants and they have a they have a major kick. And sometimes that kick is your death. And that 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 that's not we're over some herbs, please. Okay. I have been speaking with uh, Carissa and Elizabeth, who kindly have given me a few baby recipes as the coconut milk made him unwell. Perhaps I did not strain it enough. Yeah, you want to do coconut water. Coconut water. All right, that's plenty. So you want to do a little coconut water, uh, maybe a little grape juice and apple juice in it, that sort of thing, and um, uh, maybe uh, eh, I do like the mangoes pretty good, uh, that sort of thing. I think that the coconut milk is too strong. Maybe you know uh, it doesn't have to be super strained, but uh, a lot of fat. A lot of fat. When you're looking at mother's milk, mother's milk has approximately, I'm, don't, don't quote me, but I'm thinking around 3% fat. All right. Now, a baboon or a, a monkey milk is about 4% fat. But now we're taking on unhealthy individuals. You get individuals healthy, you get the, the absorption up, you're probably going to see that lipid content go up in human mother's milk. So you're probably, I mean, you're going to all be around 3 4%. Well, you're up. You're up at what seven, eight, nine percent with cow's milk or more. Maybe up to eleven percent. Goat's milk is closer. That's down around what five or six percent. So it's enough to say that. And coconut milk is pretty high in fats too. So when you look at mother's milk, it's not that awful high in fatty acids. And proteins is uh, less than one percent. So everybody that thinks you have, have to have protein for growth and everything, why does mother's milk have less than one percent in it? So that's 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 some of the, the the propaganda that's out there. The carbohydrates is the key factor to this baby, and that's going to be your fruits, your berries, and your melons. Uh, you know their little digestive tracts. Even ours don't handle vegetables, so that's a no-brainer. Uh, okay. My symptoms. Since taking your herbs and 95% fruit, I have noticed my right inner ear had a constant whooshing sound. It sounds like something is breathing in my ear. Well, you know what I would do? I would candle my ears with three candles per ear. 
candle years with three candles per ear. But you can get into weird things like that. Seen it, even experienced it myself. But I will tell you, it probably is an indication that you have congestion behind the ear, and that take a look at your eyes and look at your ear areas. That'll really tell you whether you have genetic weaknesses in these tissues or you have congestion in these tissues, which is creating an echo. So you just take a look at those things and see. But detoxification will get it eventually. You got to get up here and detox the sinuses and everything, but you want to candle your ears and open that doorway up a little bit, you know, or chew on some horseradish root or something like that. Get everybody moving. <laughs> now, also, my C section scar has started to hurt. Now, this is possible. Now, this is a good one, though. I like this one. And this is a good thing you brought this up, my dear one. She said, also, my C section has started to hurt and the most alarming pain. Nope. That's from the surgery. And that is what we talk about pain and memory pain and cells. Because remember, cells have memory and mind, just like we do. You can't be at this planet, whether you're a plant, a cell, an animal, or a homo sapien. You cannot be at this level without coming through the God worlds. Impossible. There's no uh, bypass. Can't do it. No way. Neither can God itself. You're talking about something that fry No, 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 no. So, in the understanding, we went over this in level one, how creation is set up so you can understand how cells, how everything functions, why there's memory in plants, why there's memory in animals, why there's memory in cells, why there's phantom memory pain, all kinds of things. Very explainable when you understand how creation is put together. Fun stuff. Good. It's time man opens up and becomes more aware instead of fishing around in these uh, subatomic and nano levels they have no understanding of. So, your C section can hurt, guys. Can hurt. I would, uh, a little burn salve, a little burn salve will work real well on that. Uh, get a little of that burn salve. It heal all salve, but there's a little drawing, so you could see some pus and stuff come out of that scar yet. But remember, most people are unhealthy when they go through these things. And of course, C sections or whenever any surgical intervention into the body, uh, later on, you're going to re know it. If you were totally alkaline and healthy, you would not know that. Your, pain, your scar wouldn't be hurting. Matter of fact, you wouldn't even probably see a scar. But to see a scar, and depending on how big the scar is and how red the scar is, shows you how acidic your tissues are. The less, the better. No question about it. But pain in a C-section scar, common stuff. I've, I've seen that many times in my world. And so that actually is a good thing, to be honest with you. Uh, I would work with the, um, work with the um, uh, burn salve on that one and let that uh, take some of that pain out of there and that inflammation out of there. But that's why ladies get adhesions and, of course, heavy scar tissue uh, post uh, uh, any surgery but post C-sections. And it is better to have a vaginal birth, I'm telling you. When you go to a C-section, now you're opening your whole world up here to adhesions and all kinds of things. No, no, no. And I know in some Asian countries it's an end thing, but ladies, you don't want to cut on the human body because that is a potential serious problem area if you're too acidic and it doesn't heal properly. Because the adhesions now can grow around the bowels, the uterus. I mean, that's not good. Then you have to have another surgery to cut out the adhesions. And, of course, they're going to grow back because you've never fixed the problem and that sort of thing. So, yeah, this really needs some attention here. But you're on the proper diet to do this. Stay with it. Let it ride. But buffer this with some salve. It'll help you out a little bit. If you can't get the burn salve, quick, get some comfrey salve in a health food store. Try to find a good quality calendra, comfrey, some type of good healing salve. Uh, you could do grapeseed oil, very nutritive uh, grapeseed oil. Coconut oil is very nutritive. Uh, anti-pain, but still, you're just seeing memory pain from the surgeries. But that gives you an idea of how the pain is stored in cells and why when you detox, you get that pain coming out you didn't know was there. So that's part of the art and the understanding of proper detoxification. Uh, you know, I've never, this subject has never been brought up before on the videos that I know. So I'm glad you brought this up. Really good. And look at this. A most alarming pain in my tailbone, coccyx, and anus. Well, 
you know, they did give you an epidural. They did do some things there. So, you know what? Oh, uh, you know, it, it's just dangerous practices. So you got some inflammation there. Keep pulling it out, sweetheart. Keep pulling it out. It might not hurt to put some salve over the coccyx area. Lay on your stomach and just let all that soak in. Maybe put a little cool pack on that. You don't want to put any heat on that. You want to put a cool pack on that and cool that down a little bit. It's what I do. It never felt right. I now have piles and the same pain when four and a half months ago, almost like my bowels are hard and aggravated. Well, keep in mind, you went through some morphine, you went through some nerve suppression, so you yourself wanted to enhance your nervous system. You want to go after your adrenals, you want to go after brain and nerve, and enhance your nervous system up, because they slammed yours too. So that's part of the problem. And then an epidural. <laughs> What they probably did is lock all that down there, that length. Because remember, I can't remember the university that found the uh, lymphatic system, but they, she was pointing to the cerebral spinal fluid as the detoxifying fluid to the brain. If that is remotely true, then any 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 scoliosis, severe scoliosis, or any any compression or any any narrowing of the canal could severely restrict the ability to eliminate waste and that would also be primarily also coming out of the legs as well so you know this is all part of this gigantic lymph system and part of this insanity of the medical doctor always feeling like they have to to be involved they always have to intervene and it's like no 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 and fear tactics are abound. That that's a sad thing. So I'd get on stomach and bowel number two for a little while. Uh, that's a gentle one, but it's just, you're going to get a bit of something to help you go a little bit and I pick up a little pancreatic and liver nudge with that one. So uh, stomach and bowel number two would be the one I would recommend. Uh, further, I would recommend some salve on the on the uh, uh, the coccyx and, and that area, but also I, I would put it on the uh, on the um, scar. And pick up my adrenal glands. You know, this means your nervous system's down. When you start seeing after a situation where you were given a high narcotic like that, and you see a sluggishness, you know it was neurotoxic to you. And but you also know that you were a little weak in that area for to have that bump because a lot of people don't get that bump that quick. So to see that bump means you're already a little bit low in the nervous system. Well, that then brings the 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 the, the question right around to the daughter again. And where is she with her nervous system and that? So this is why you guys' understanding is prime and primo for this planet because these guys are doing things they don't have any idea. They don't have the ability to look around like we do because they're mind chasers. We want to pull back and show you all the connecting links so you can understand. Oh, yeah. So you'll have a good understanding and not be trapped with some of this stuff like this poor lady was. And a bunion that is burning. Well, you got to move your lymph, honey. You got a lymph in trouble here. That's why the bunion too. So you have got to get your lymph moving. That bunion will go away. All this pain will go away. But you got to get your kidneys filtering. Get your adrenals up. I would also interject some brain and nerve in my system as well. Okay. All right. P.S. Please don't shatter my spiritual belief. I was born with different colored eyes: one blue, one brown, and blue. I was a seventh child. I was told I had been touched by God. I hope to hear from you. P.S. I have got a number. How could I shatter your spiritual belief? You know, this is the good. You bring up an interesting thing here. To be spiritual is to have no belief systems. If you want to truly be godly, and allow yourself to open up and touch that which is and work with all the spiritual beings and stuff you have to free yourself from the chains of what we've been talking about of the thought of desires and uh, belief systems your spirituality should be your awareness you have to realize that we're all spiritual beings having a human experience. But all beings, all things come out of the one. So there's nothing any better or nothing any lower than anyone or anything else. Everything is of equal terms. I don't look as a plant as something lower than me. 
or higher than me. I look at everything as part of the one. And that's true spirituality. Spirituality cannot hold belief systems like religions or all is lost. A belief system is highly limiting, so it doesn't matter what color your eyes are, it doesn't matter what your body looks like, it doesn't matter what your emotions are, what your mind is, or all these other things, because those aren't you. Those are all things you're using to guide your attention around this lovely planet and all these other dimensions simultaneously. So, truly, when you look at who you are, magnificent beings from places far, far away. And so, you don't want anything here to, to trip you up. If I said that's a, that's a blue eye with a chronic uh, limp in it, probably going to be true. Who cares? You were touched by God. You were so much more than touched by God, sweetheart. You were so much more than touched by God, I have to tell you. It's time that each and every one of you accept your divinity. Accept who you are. You all came out of the one like I did. We all come out of the one. So, that's who you are. You're these spiritual beings. We're just talking about automobiles, cars, bodies. We're just driving our bodies around to take our attention around so we can observe. And, and, and of course, we have bodies that'll, that'll, that'll put emotional components into the experience and put the thought experiences and, and, and of course, uh, memory and, and emotions and all that all tied together to, to make the experience, experience grander. But never let anybody and ever shake you from your spirituality. Your spirituality is active conscious awareness. It isn't something you wear like a suitcase. Here I am to bring my spirituality home with me. No, it's who you are. And I can read that in your voice and in your way. You are a spiritual person. A spiritual person is a little more aware than one that is not, if you were going to use a spiritual connotation. And simply put, a spiritual person has probably had some hard knocks, and they just let go more. They just let go more. They, this world doesn't hold the sucre that it once did for them. Their sucre is more God and inward and, and consciousness and expansion. Not so much the physical activity of movement and, and all that that implies. So there's all levels to this, but if you want to get to some of the highest levels, accept your divinity and who you really are and who is really experiencing all these things you're experiencing in your world. Good stuff. You just have to go in to get out. All right. I have got a number of friends and clients following you. They also bought your book, too. Oh, that's nice. Thank you, thank you, thank you. We just need to get the world at this level of understanding to where people can get their remedy and their joy back and their happiness back. And someone like you, that you can't uh, let that C-section get in your consciousness. You're a spiritual being, so you don't let any of that ride. That's a soul. That daughter of yours is a soul, powerful soul. Coming from you, you know it's a spiritual being, a more aware being. And you're just going to keep that little body healthy. So that soul, when that body's mature, can come to full light. And it's just, it's, it's fun stuff. I would also like to do the detoxification course. I hope to see you next year. Oh, you got to. This is Kay from London. Hey, you got to come to the detox class. Fun, fun, fun. That's when we really get into the God worlds and how it's made and helpful, you know, helpful. Matter of fact, I, I don't know what I did with mine, but I have this God worlds chart that I have made. And um, it's it shows all the different uh, levels of heaven and stuff, and it's good stuff. I love that. It's hard to find places when you don't have a map. Um, all right, this is Joy's Worlds. What do you think about the olive leaves? I don't know. I don't know. I don't have them in my world much. So I, I, I can't give you an opinion. Let me know what you think. Let me know what you think. Uh, I don't have an opinion on that right now. Uh, Joy's World. Another question. I was diagnosed three months ago with mono. Yeah, my sister had mono growing up. She was diagnosed with that. I've had my thyroid... I've had my thyroid taken out. I have fibromyalgia and GERD. Been doing lots of fruits. The GERD to be doing a little better, but I'm not taking the acid reflux medicine. 
Yeah, you know what? If we can save uh, future uh, beings from having the medical doctors rip out thyroids and stuff, they're easy to fix. Goiters are easy to go away. All these tumors are easy to fix. It's easy to fix hyperthyroidism or hypo. These are all easy to fix. We don't have to have things, body parts removed from people that don't know how to fix anything. That's how they fix things. We'll just remove it. That's about as immature as you can get. That's like a like a kid with a little science kit. <laughs> well, you know, ah, scary, scary. All right. So let's look at this. First of all, your lymphatic system is a mess. There's no question because they have fibromyalgia. Fibromyalgia, guys, is systemic acidosis. It falls under lupus, Lyme's, all the arthritis. They're all a lump of them under the same. You get rid of them the same. They all go away the same. But this is serious because it's systemic acidosis. And it simply means that your lymph system has been stagnant for uh, probably several lifetimes in the family. And then when you came in your mom, your mom filled you good. And then bam. And this will be especially true with mothers who drink milk, thinking they're going to give their babies calcium and then calcium drinking milk while pregnant. Oh my God, I can't even imagine. So some serious stuff. So the thyroid taken out, not good, not smart. All right, so that's a problem right off. Joy. And I don't know how to uh, tell you about that other than if you have a little piece left in there, you might want to try to regrow the thyroid back. That means 100% raw for a, a year or two. But, you know, you could, if you have any stem cells, anything there, it will grow back. Done it, done it, done it. Not a lot. Nobody seems to want to hang in for the time to do things like that. But that said, the question is, did they take your parathyroids out with it? That's going to bring you years of depression and uh, connective tissue problems and stuff like this. These guys aren't doing anything to help you with that. And you can't just supplement calcium. That doesn't work. So this is, you know, becomes more serious as you see things. But I'll say this, the reason she lost her thyroid was the reason she has fibromyalgia and the reason she has GERD, right? Right. And what is all those reasons? Lymphatic stagnation. This is acidosis at its worst. And this is systemic acidosis, meaning in the gut wall, in the joints, in the muscles, all over your lymph system is froze, done. You're not filtering well. And if your thyroid's gone, how do you sweat? So these things are special considerations. These poor people have done things or a lot of things done to them that they don't realize the consequences of. And they were not privy to how to get well going through this. So it's all karma, karma, karma. But I would get up on a 100% raw food diet. I would definitely go after my kidneys, my adrenal glands, my GI tract with herbs. And my diet is going to be fruits, berries, and melons. If you got to cheat, cheat with the salads. But you do that, sweetheart, and you'll clean all that up. You're still going to bump us thyroid issues the rest of your life. I don't know. Unless you can get one to grow back, uh, that's going to be a little bit of a problem for you. Staying warm, uh, the rate of metabolism can be way down. You eat one meal that'll last you all day or two. A lot of things can go down with the thyroid going down. And if they took the parathyroids, that's your skeletal system. But remember, the thyroid produces also calcitonin, calcitonin. And that's another important factor in the, in the movement of calcium in and out of structures. So you've got the thyroid and parathyroid actually work in harmony with structure as well. We don't talk much about it because I don't like to confuse too much already. But it's enough to say that the thyroid, parathyroid, everybody here is involved in your bones and connective tissue. It's also involved in your depressions. It's also involved in how well you like yourself or how well you don't like yourself. Your thyroid goes down, you go down. You're not happy with yourself. Nothing is exciting anymore in the world. If your testosterone or estrogens are down, uh, your, your neurotransmitters are down, it's a hell. You're, you're like the like the guy's dad, his pineal's down, his adrenals are down, so the anxiety. So you are living pretty much in a dark world of hell. And you can start flipping bipolar, schizophrenia, all types of things are, are, are shavings off of this. So, you know, all types of bad things can happen. So you want to go to the world of health. Go fix why you had to have the thyroid removed. See, if you never fix why they remove things, they're going to keep removing things because you never fixed it. Common sense.
past 3.30 already. I didn't get, I got a late start today, guys. I had an appointment this morning and we had meetings today. Robert Martin. Hi, Dr. Morris. Hi, Robert. I have started a fruit diet for three weeks and doing excellent with kidneys filtering. Wow! This guy got his kidneys filtering. Robert got his kidneys filtering in three weeks. Man, my only problem is that I have started to develop sensitive teeth. Okay, so here's the thing. Get yourself some baking soda, aluminum-free baking soda, and after you do the fruits, wash your mouth out with baking soda. But I want you to check this because you're going to see this. Get you some pH papers. And even before you eat and after you eat, check your pH of your saliva. Always check your pH of your saliva throughout the day. What you're going to find is an acidic mouth. So, and fruits, acid fruits can exacerbate that a little bit, no question. So, maybe pull back on acid fruits a little bit. Hey, hang maybe more with the mangoes, the grapes, the apples, the subacid categories. I would wash my mouth out though with a little pinch of baking soda in my mouth. It'll bring alkalization uh, to the mouth. That'll help stop all of that. At the same time, man, internally go after your limb system because what we see topically sometimes we don't understand that's more internal. And as you start kicking up the lymph system, all these little ugly heads of deterioration and things that have been going on raise their head up. A lot of times you don't know you've got deterioration going on until you start on a raw diet and then suddenly bam, bam. It's like her, her, her incision there, her, her, her scar tissue. Didn't realize what scar tissue is. You know, so all of this uh, stuff like this, you just have to hit the road of detox and dig in and get that body hydrated and alkalized. In, in, in the way we talk. Uh, is this normal or would eating more greens help this? Well, you can do some green juices. You don't want to stop detox, but it is saying you've got a problem here already acidically. So throughout the day, just check your pH before and after you eat. Check your pH and take a record and see what your saliva pH is in the next three or four days. And you'll, your answer is right there. So as you return and you start getting the kidneys filtering, you start getting the lymph moving, your saliva has to be base. At least 7 or above. Digestive enzymes work the best at 7.5 to 8. That's where you amylase, that's where the enzymes work the best. Even trypsin all works best at 7.5 to 8 pH. So that's mouth and duodenal, upper duodenal. I eat fruit constantly throughout the day. It seems that grapes are very acidic on my teeth as well as kiwis. It might be. So you might want to recheck the grapes you're using because grapes should be sweet as honey. If they're not, they're, they're picked unripe. So they could be too acidic. The kiwis are too acidic. I can't eat kiwis either. So change your, change your fruit source. Uh, grapes are so great, but if they're not sweet as honey, you know, because when you get done eating a grape, you want to see high alkalinity. You want to see all the activation and everything going on, and you want to see high alkalinity, particularly with grapes. But do that with the mouth, and you could do uh, some mouth pulling or, or gum pulling with Hill All Tea. And you'd make your tea and then spit it in a cup, take a little more, and let it soak into the gums. Now, there's plantain, so you're going to get a little drawing action on the gums. You know, but you want to pull on that lymph system, you want to clean, you want to get everything moving. But most of this happens interstitially. Most of this happens inside the tissues, not on the outside of tissues. And that only route through that way is blood or lymph. It's the only route to get to cells is through the blood or lymph. The problem with the lymph, everything is draining away from the cells. So it's just a big difference. I got another little stack here. Hi, Dr. M. I just finished Arnold Errett's Mucus Diet Healing System and Rational Fasting, and oh my God. This book has changed my life profoundly, and it's a complete 360 turn from what you've conditioned ourselves to believe about vitality. Wow, just wow. V equals P minus O. But you know what? I broke my teeth on Arnold Errett. I loved him. Um... Professor Hotima, which is George Clements. These are fruititarian thinkers. I think Carrington is a fruititarian thinker. Um, I had a hard time finding fruititarian books. I knew already that uh, fruit was the answer for us, but I was still kind of stuck with carrot juice and crap like that, but I kept looking at the fruits, but I couldn't find fruititarian books. 
and that was more of a problem because vegetables just didn't. I just, I, I, I just knew. So then, the more I read a fruitarian book, that's us. That's it. And so that really makes a lot of difference to understand that level. So I, I always recommend Arnold Ayers, even N. W. Walker. You know, I mean, green juice is okay, but carrot juices, forget that. Fruit and fruit fasting is such a level above this. Maybe man wasn't ready back then to open up his consciousness at these levels, because that's what these fruit do. They open you up spiritually. I mean, it's amazing. You guys have seen that already. I've listened to a good amount of your YouTubes and am aware of your healing modalities and their relation to fruit. Did you uh, derive your healing approach from Arnold Eric? Pieces. Everything that I, I teach now is acquired from all the pieces that I've been, uh, you know, living in, a, living in a little Volkswagen van out in the woods for a few years, uh, pretty, pretty intense alone states. And so uh, I spent a lot of time reading and studying whatever books I could get on out-of-body travels and, and, and fruitarian and raw foods. Those were my subject matters of the day. And I, I, I was interested in out-of-body travel and spirituality, and I was interested. Of course, I was reading Ospinsky and Watts and, you know, your modern day more. Uh, uh, Watts was a little more modern day, a more modern day philosopher. Alan Watts, I think it was. But I, I was reading all of these greats to see. I read Carl Jung, and of course you have Freud. And, you know, you're, you're getting a, a view uh, from all levels of what's been going on here. And so I spent years reading that stuff. So yeah, I have a tad bit of Arnold Errett in me. I have a tad bit of a lot of these people. These were good greats that did started plowing the field for us years and years ago. So I commend these guys. The crap they took doing this. I mean, imagine what you're getting today with people going fruit or you're too thin, things like that. Well, imagine 50 years ago, they would have hung you. I mean, this is the problem out there. They, it's just unawareness. But good questions. Absolutely. Absolutely. I am a type 1 diabetic, 29 years old. See, look, young, young, young at 29 years old. I've been raw on and off for a couple of years now, almost always vegan. I've also detoxes quite a bit, but that's never enough. No, it's ultimately up to me. But do you have a specific, more definitive approach to healing? I do. I, I have protocols that I just ride you down when it comes to that. Because I am going into the pancreas to the beta cells, but I'm also going neurologically. you got to remember there are neurological type 1s out there. And I'm going neurologically and I'm going to the beta cell itself. But I'm going to the beta cell, I only get through the beta cell through what? Blood and lymph. And I'm going to deliver through the blood, but I'm going to carry away with the lymph. If I can get that hydrated and the kidneys opened. And this starts to turn on the beta cells again because the lymph, when the lymph backs up, when sewage backs up, it suppresses that which it backs up around, right? Well, where does all this sewage back up around? Your cells. Your cells. The cell wall is, is, is less permeable after a while. It, it tries to protect itself, but after a while, sewage just builds up inside the cell, no longer able to discharge outside. So all the organelles, all the metabolic waste inside the cell, it becomes intracellular acidosis, and then whoosh, mutation, mutation, mutation. See what acids do to people's limbs and everything? Those are cells. So you can imagine the mutation intracellularly. And this is where they come up with the C word, the cancer word. Or another word they use is atypical. Well, a lot of you ladies have been diagnosed with an atypical cells vaginally from pap smears. That's why I invented the Hill All Tea. Douche for a couple of weeks with that. It'll turn those cells right around. You're in good shape. And if you are diagnosed with atypical cells, I highly recommend you do that. Because now you're walking towards cervical cancer. Because these are cells that are being damaged, and they'll keep being damaged unless you fix the system that's damaging them. Well, blood doesn't damage anything. You don't can't stay alive long enough for that to happen. So you only have one other foot to blame. If you can find others, let me know. So that's the lymphatic floods. That's your that's your sewer system floods. So um, makes more sense when you look at it that way. Um, let me see here. Healing type 1 diabetes besides just transitioning to mucus. Well, I believe in 100% fruits, berries, and melons with type 1. I just had this conversation on the last video. 
uh, about that and we really do and I have a type 1 video up so hopefully that you'll be able to view that and have more information with that but uh, for sure no matter what blood sugar your problems you're having excuse me whether it is uh, cortisol and type 1 or beta cell insulin type 2 you still have to stay with simple sugars and you can't avoid simple sugars to avoid simple sugars means death and you do not want to go there because the body does not burn protein for energy unless you starve yourself for from carbohydrates you starve yourself from carbohydrates which is carbon then the body's got to turn to nitrogen and that's not good that means you have the breakdown of the human body not good so you want to always do carbohydrates but simple sugars the fructose the insulin is only for glucose not for fructose so it's another look the, I know the medical dictionaries claim claim that uh, the body takes uh, fructose which is a superior simple sugar to the liver converts it to an inferior simple sugar yeah the world is still flat guys the world is still flat I mean, there, there, there's some of these hairpin ideas. It's like, where do you guys come off of that kind of crap? And you got people that buy into that crap. And that's why we have so much varied opinions with nobody really knowing the truth of it all. Well, the truth is in clinical work. All I do is echo what I see. I have no reason to tell you something that, 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 that doesn't exist or that I just is my concept. I only work with what works. With what doesn't work, we throw it out. If, so, if we're doing something that's not doing good, we get rid of it or we augment it we, do, we don't stay with things that don't work our whole our whole gig is getting you well period we're we're just souls that way that's our whole that's our whole flow that's marcy attila our whole desire is to help you get well that that's it you know and it's so well you know i have the spiritual side of this Uh, I ask because you use herbs, but I know your foundation is fruit. No, I, I believe on a total fruit, berry, and melon diet. You can use herbs for the pancreas, but I would go after my adrenal glands, my kidneys, clean up the bowels because the pancreas is a branch off the tree, so you have to clean up the GI tract. I'd go after my brain and nervous system because there's neurological diabetes. Remember, your nervous system, the autonomic, controls everything that goes on in, 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 in the body there. And so to suppress the autonomic is to suppress bowel movements, breathing so you got constipation you've got your COPDs your asthma up so you get all these type of symptoms when you suppress the nervous system well the same thing with the beta cell remember I told you about the lady that went in surgery on her knee four surgeries later she comes out with type 1 and she quit menstruating all from propofol that was a neurotoxic event that caused the beta cells to stop producing insulin she didn't get the neural responses from the brain through the autonomic to that it's suppressed well, you know, we got the neurotoxic out of her, got her built up, and boom, she's done. She's got her periods back. She's got, of course, she's all over type 1. That was a little easier case, though. When it's, most type 1s are genetically weakened beta cells, and that's a little more of a problem. Now they have beta cell transplants and all this crap out there, and I've had them in here. Some might work. I have no idea, but the ones that come to me, of course, don't work. So why transplant when you can rebuild never did make sense to me because you have to harvest it from somebody so that's the sort of thing you know I, I like rebuilding much better I've been uh, wanting your help for a while but never had the money and and I may be able to scrape something together for a consult and the first two weeks of protocol Alex Alex um, You know, call into one of the girls, tell them you just need a, uh, with Marcy, like a half hour maybe, an hour, an hour consult at the most because you can't afford it. You have a type 1 and have her help you off of this, Alex, with type 1. That's what she deals with more than I do now. I don't deal with people too much, but uh, there's too much going on. Uh, so uh, I'm always in their offices every day, two or three times. I train them. I work with them all the time. So uh, that's what I would do. I would rather see you spend less money on consults and more on an herbal program that will help you. You want to focus on what will help you. Understanding the situation, understanding the diet, that's easy, man. That's easy, easy, easy. Because if you step out, try this. Try uh, 30 days or try two weeks. Try two weeks, uh, fruits, berries, and melons. 
all right, and see what your blood sugars do. You're on insulin, I'm sure, so play with that, right? But you want to take responsibility for your own insulin. Don't let your medical doctors play with you too much because they don't know what to do in cases like this. So you have to learn to take self-responsibility. That's what they should be teaching you anyway. But they don't because they want to be the end -alls. But you want to learn how to adjust those uh, units a little bit. But what I'm saying, watch that because you might have to go. Some type ones are down so quick it's shocking. Others, no. So it depends on the genetics of beta cells or not, neurological weaknesses or not. So there's a lot of cofactors here. I've seen people come out of number two like BAM! I had a nurse 4040 uh, insulin type, I think she was a type two. She could have been a type one. One week done. So there's different reasons for different things. So I don't know what to tell you. Generally type 1's you're probably six months to a year involved if it's genetic weakness in the pancreas and the beta cells. But try that two weeks just on fruits, berries and melons and then have yourself a simple salad. Just have yourself a so watch your blood sugars of course and then just have yourself a simple salad. Alex and see what happens. I'll show you. You'll be able to see it for yourself. And also proteins. Look at what proteins does to your blood sugars. So go on your fruits and bed for two weeks again and then do a protein meal. I'll show you what happens to your blood sugars. If you've not done this already, you should be pleasantly surprised at what is making your blood sugar go up and what isn't. How can protein affect your blood sugar? But it does. Especially seafood, but it does. John, Mr. John. I am writing to you in care of my wife. She spends most of her days in pain and I'm wondering if there is any hope for her to recover. Hell yes, man. Are you kidding? She is 64 years old. 64 years old. She's younger than I am. Oh, wait a minute. No, I'm 54. Uh, oh, look at this. It has been diagnosed about two months ago with alcoholic cirrhosis of liver with ascites. In other words, she's filling up with fluid in the gut, in, in the abdomen. Oh, God, that's not fun. Oh, she's advanced. Uh, PHT, uh, portal hypertension, interesting, uh, and pain, abdominal, generalized, of course, systemic, man, systemic. Uh, she is also having a difficult time trying to quit smoking. Uh oh. Uh, I think she may be ready to get on board with the protocol that you would recommend. Could you please help? I'd be glad to help, uh, John. All right. So there's one thing for sure. She's got to stop the alcohol. Uh, that, that, that's one thing for sure. You can switch to these glycerin formulas for a little while, but they need metabolized by the liver. I'd rather you see you use the alcohol tinctures, even though she has had alcohol that created this. Right? Partly, partly, not just all. That's the lymph system involved in this as well. So, get on the 14-week protocol. That's the easiest, quickest way I can tell you. Get on the 14-week protocol or send it in. I'll write you one. Uh, uh, however you want to do that, get with a counselor. But you want to get her going. You'll pull her cirrhosis out. Depends how advanced, depends how long that's going to take. You've got to clean up her GI tract to get the liver to come clean. You've got to get the kidneys and adrenals up so she can start filtering the lymphatic system again. Pull all this inflammation out of the liver, gallbladder area. She probably has a little pancreatic involvement too. It's hard to have one without a little on the other. I'm telling you, they're on the opposite sides of the same street. So, you know, this is the, this is the system down here. It's why she's feeling pain all over herself. This is like a fibromyalgia, systemic pain. It's systemic pain is simply systemic acidosis. Where, do, where does acids come from? Everything you eat is then converted to acids after it's been, after its life has been sucked out of it. Acids is the last metabolic waste of the human body, parasitic waste. Everything's excreted through the kidneys or skin and you're in good shape or not. If you're not filtering, you're holding these wastes in. So your wife isn't filtering from her kidneys well, particularly on the right side. So that is exacerbated with alcohol, exacerbated this uh, high deterioration of the liver. But you can get that back. The liver loves to regenerate, so don't count her out at all. It can regenerate this. Done it many times in my world. Uh, get out of pain. If to get out of pain is to get out of acids. Well, every time she smokes, and I don't review this video, John, but every time she smokes, if she's going to smoke, get a water pipe. Get her a water pipe. 
she can't break the habit of smoking get her a water pipe because you've got to get her away from direct ingestion uh, of combusted uh, uh, chemistry that's all acidic no buffer of liver goes right into her lungs right through interstitially right into the blood so she's losing calcium from this uh, majorly uh, I mean this is a big deal and of course that acidifies the blood and you can fill it all through your body so she's in trouble and she's got to wake up to that and fix herself it's easy to fix yourself so you don't count herself out you can fix yourself medical doctors don't know how to fix you most nature patients don't know how to fix you very fixable but don't let your wife deteriorate down and not don't play with interferon or anything bull crap like that she's in trouble with the ascites though I'll tell you about that filling up when your body starts filling up with fluids you're in trouble and this is serious because you've got congestive heart failure, pulmonary edema, you've got all kinds of things to consider. She's highly inflamed in the bowels and gut. You know interstitially she's backed up, you know she's malabsorbed. She's all these things. But you simply start her on the two-week kit, deworming and everything else. You start her on the fruits, berries, and melons, and you start moving her car down the road. And pretty soon the car will get a little more speed, her body will get a little better, a little better, a little better, a little better, and pretty soon she'll be looking in the rear view mirror at all these problems. But she has to take full responsibility and learn what we're talking about here and the system that she has to deal with and work herself out of this. Not difficult if she has the strength and the tenacity and the willingness to do it. She's only 64, so not to do it would be a cop out, but what am I going to say about it? So do your best, John. Let your wife review this. But get you get on our herbal program. We have herbs that clean the liver, but you have to understand the lymphatic system. This is huge. You can't just give her liver herbs. You'll go nowhere with that. Nope, can't do that. You want a systemic work where you're working on the systems involved and you're working on all these other things that she's going to have connecting to this. All right? <clears throat> And I'm taking a for an answer. Oh, wow. Hey, Doc, can you please uh, talk about eye floaters? I have a lot. Uh, first, my left side sinus is blocked up. Then I got the floaters in both eyes, though. Now, let's stop right there for a minute. Hopefully, these are mucus floaters. Okay? So, you want to get the eye wash. And we have eye cups or you can get them, I think, probably any pharmacy. Get your little eye cup. Get your skin temperature water in there. No no chlorine or fluoride or anything, but get you some just RO or nice, nice water. Skin temperature, about 12 drops of the eye wash. 12 drops. Now, it's going to be a little stingy just for a little while, but 12 drops. You wash both eyes out in the morning and in the evening. Now, you're probably going to wake up with your eyes closed, matted closed with mucus. Okay, good. But keep pulling that mucus out of the eye. Internally, you want to deal with your lymph system because this isn't good. That means you're getting full. Your cup is getting full and you're getting a lot of sinus congestion and everything else. You want to break that loose. I'd also recommend candling the ears, working on the neural lymphatics down the back and getting the kidneys to filter, working on the bowels. Working on with me is diet and herbs, fruits, berries, and melons, and herbs for it. It's the only two tools you need. Two tools will take your train right into Wellville. Now, if they're not mucus floaters, we have other problems. Detached retinas, uh, uh, pupils. Uh, uh, we have the breakdown of tissue. And that's the worst way to go. If it's that, you wanna, you've want you got to get up in here with the same thing, but I would get into eye tissue, bilberry. I get, we have some formulas, the Visioplex. Get in with things that will help the eye uh, almost immediately. But also, uh, I would be thinking parathyroid. I'd be thinking, you know, if you're detaching uh, retinas or pupils or whatever, you're going to want to strengthen connective tissue. So I'm thinking of parathyroid along with that. Uh, so it depends what type of floaters. Most of this is what you're saying from the sinuses is going to be mucus floaters. Better, by far better. And so see where you go with cleaning your eyes out with that and all that. Uh, also acquired asthma six to eight months after the floater. So here's something. You are eating something wrong. You are eating dairy products. <clears throat> Excuse me. 
or animal products or something that's very mucus forming to you. Even cayenne peppers and stuff can be very mucus forming to a fruititarian. You know, try this, you guys that are all on fruit, then try a pepper, cayenne pepper or something. See what it does to you. You can almost choke because it, it is so stimulating to a very sensitive and loving mucosa. And you begin to realize how these cooked foods have damaged and made our mucosa less sensitive. I can't handle anything hot. Uh, uh. My ears clog up, my eyes clog up, and I go, I just lost about a month or two worth of detox here by just eating some peppers. Now, I'm a different guy than Richard Schultz. Uh, the asthma. So now you know you got a couple of things going on here. You've got the adrenals are down. To have to have asthma, guys, you have to have the adrenals down. Hand in foot. This is this is uh, uh, the team. So to have the adrenals down means your autonomic is down in those ways, and therefore you see the uh, the asthma or the difficulty in, in taking a deep breath, etc., etc. She came with belching and fatigue. Interesting. So uh, hard telling what the belching is, other than fermenting your foods. You're not uh, digesting properly, either you're mixing too many combinations, wrong combinations, not chewing properly, or you have a pancreatic weakness. Fatigue is your adrenal, it's going to go back to that. I had acid reflux for five years. My left kidney seems to hurt as well all the time. Well, I'm telling you, and I've told you guys this for years, is that you're going to always be able to go back to the kidneys and adrenal glands each and every time. Not once in a while, each and every time, and she just gave her own clue away, my kidneys hurt, especially my left one. Yep, the whole lower back, case closed, I, close, I rest my case. The whole lower back side, when I do prolonged heavy lifting or take too many herbs or, or supplements, eh, let's back up here a minute. First of all, with kidney weakness, I would not do any heavy lifting because that's L4, L5, and below. That's bladder, ovaries, prostates. Bam, you're going to throw them out. Nick say on the heavy lifting say until you get all this stuff fixed. The second thing here is um, too many herbs or supplements. You want a rounded herbal regimen that focuses on your, your proper focus of regenerative detoxification. You don't need to take a whole bunch of stuff you don't need. You want to be focused in what you need. And I've given you that focus, kidneys, adrenals, endocrine glands, the nervous system, the GI tract, the, you know, that sort of thing. Now, supplements. I don't recommend hardly any supplements. Uh, why waste your money? I mean, you're trying. More is not better, by any stretch of the imagination. Most of you've been on supplements for a long time. I have people that bring in grocery bags of supplements, and I'm saying, "Why are you in to see me for? If all you're taking all of this, you don't need me." Right. See, so I've just been in this field too long. I can just tell you, you're you're throwing money away with supplements. Put it on focused herbal focus and you will be so happy. Focus on your diet, focus on the proper herbal protocols and you will win the day every day. Don't have to go crazy. You know, that's people that are unbalanced. Don't go crazy, go balanced and you'll be good. Thank you so much. Sir, I am diabetic who has lost 45 pounds in the last year. So what does that tell you? All right. He hasn't said type 1 or 2, but you can about guess type 2. Now, how do you think I know that? He lost 45 pounds. How do you think? What would be one of the factors that might help him lose that much weight? To have blood sugar problems, you have to have adrenal glands that are down. Well, when the adrenal glands go down, where do they sit on top of? The kidneys, so they go down. Well, what's your kidney's main job? As we know it is. The, 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 the eliminative organs of the gigantic lymphatic system. So, where am I going here? Malabsorption. It's not part of diabetes. It has nothing to do with that. When you have sugar metabolism problems, that's tissue problems. All problems are either with the cells or the fluids. They're not diseases that walk in and decide they didn't like you or, you know, somehow there's a lot of people that contracted or caught diabetes. <laughs> yeah. uh, 
I need to, yeah. I mean, that's insane. Come on. That's ridiculous. But you create all these things and you can uncreate them like you created them. But you have to reverse the way you created them, right? So you want to you want to look at this cutting out most sugars, grains. That isn't that isn't the answer. Cutting out the grains and the processed foods and the starches are essential for everyone to be healthy, period. But you can't stay away from simple sugars, nor do you want to, or you'll get real fatigued and you'll start feeling pain and everything else. Everything will start escalating because now you're doing higher protein diets and nothing good comes out of this one for you. It just uh, nervous system goes down, gangrene sets in. I mean, you're just acidifying, acidifying, acidifying because the kidneys and adrenals, they're twins. When you're having uh, adrenal problems, you're having kidney problems. And when you have kidney problems, you're having lymphatic problems. And that is hell. That is the hellville we talk about. That's pain, swelling, unhappiness. All the things that we're reading here is a victim of the acid side and the lymphatic system predominantly. It might be affecting the nervous system. It might be affecting other things. But ultimately, the, the, the uh, lymphatic system is the key. Uh, of course, the nervous system, nice to, to get that up. Now, I've recently started making fermented sauerkraut and make home kombucha and love them. Well, you can enjoy those if you want. That's okay, but that's on the dead side of life. Start getting on the live side of life. Get into your fruits, your berries, and your melons. Fix your adrenal glands and kidneys. Get your malabsorption taken care of, and you'll put your weight and muscles right back on. That being said, I have had horribly itchy ears for a few years now. Fungus. So go after, use parasite M, go after the fungus in the body. Why would a diabetic have more fungal problems than one that has proper sugar metabolism? Just that, with sugar metabolism problems. So what you don't metabolize, you ferment. And I've said this before, your body can have moles growing all over it with that. Yep. So uh, you're just full of fungus too, so you got to get that out of you as well. And cleaning the lymph system does all of that. How cool. After looking into it further, I'm thinking it is a fungal or yeast related. Absolutely. I've been using a mix of alcohol, hydrogen peroxide, and powdered boric acid. You know what? Uh, why don't you just take anti uh, fungal uh, herbs? They work great, they don't hurt you, they're nutritive. But uh, alcohol, hydrogen peroxide, you plan to get all the fungus out this way, huh? Hmm. I'd be very careful with that thinking because your fungus is systemic. It's head to toe. So you have to, it has to go out with the wash. Well, which wash goes out? Sewage. That's your lymph system. So work that way. Work with Parasite M or some antifungal parasit, uh, herbal and start hunking on your sewer system. You got to fix your blood sugar and your kidneys anyway. It usually helps with the itching quite well, but since I've started drinking my kombucha, it seems worse. Now, the little secret of why I don't use mushrooms. It's part of the fungus family. So you have a high fungus involvement and you're eating fungal food. Uh, I read in doctor's article that if you have candida or problem with yeast, you shouldn't eat fermented foods or drink kombucha. Well, why are you doing it then? Oh, this is Vicky. Vicky, you know, honey, yeah, you hear a lot about mushrooms and the and the immune system and all that. You know, what a waste. What a waste of time. I played with kombucha. I I played with all of them. Shiitake. I, I, I my my uh, my uh, uh, immune formula has baby mushrooms because the babies are they claim are more potent. So I but I don't ever use that formula because. I don't need to. I, I clean people out. I, we get rid of tumors. We clean everything out of them. We rebuild them. And I don't need to use excessive formulas to do it. So I just don't use mushrooms much. I can eat them. I like to eat mushrooms. The ones with the little, uh, what is it, violet or blue? Re no, no, I was, I was thinking of something else. I, uh, so you confuse when doctors write articles about things. That's the problem. But I, I have to agree with this article. I don't recommend sauerkraut, any fermented foods. Jensen was a fan of fermented foods, but he was always passing gas and had all kinds of gastric distress. It's like you don't want to ferment your food. You want the whole design is to get your foods out before they start fermenting. 
or putrefying. That's the whole idea. You don't want to have putrefaction and, and fermentation going on inside of your body. You'll have some minimal stuff going on always in the advent of chemistry. But, you know, most of this you want outside the body. So why eat foods that are, have a need for fungus involvement? You know, when you start, when you start eating overripe fruit or veggies, you're inviting the fungal community in. That's their job. So we can't get mad if we uh, help them out a little bit. But Vicki, I'd get on a parasite aim and go after it that way. Fix your uh, adrenal glands and your kidneys. If you have a type 1, work with the pancreas a little bit. Work with your nervous system a little bit. Or have one of us put you on a protocol or something like that, you know. Fix yourself up, sweetheart. Hi, Dr. Morris. My name is Jonathan. I am 57 years old and live in the UK. I was diagnosed with locally advanced prostate cancer in February 2014 with PSAs of 77. Ouch! And a Gleason score of 9.1. I was put <coughs> on hormone therapy, which I have continued until recently. <sighs> what they do to men is give them Lupron. And Lupron is like a Rumidex or Tamoxifen in the females, and those suppress estrogen receptors. Um, the, um, uh, the testosterone inhibitor inhibits the adrenal glands. So I had, I had a, uh, a professor that had his prostate removed, and his PSAs were zero. But they had him on Lupron, and he didn't come to see me because his PSA started going up, and he was asking me, why am I going up when I don't have a prostate? And I said, because you have all kinds of tissue around there, and uh, you haven't done anything to fix the problem. And so uh, his PSAs were going up, because these are antigens, and they were going up and up. They hit 77, 80, and he's freaking out. He's giving me a call going, why are they going up? I'm on your program. And I just happened to remember that he had told me he was on Lupron. And I can't advise people to come off of things. That's not my field. Now, in our private club, we, can't, we have the full power and authority and the uh, rights to talk to you as we would anybody. That's uh, why we have a private sector club. Uh, we have a right to open our mouths and communicate without medical intervention or advice. These guys are jokers. These guys don't even know what they're talking about. So we have to go into private clubs and things like this to find protection, and we're protected there by the Constitution and the Supreme Court. You know, the Constitution is one thing, but a Supreme Court ruling is everything. And we have a Supreme Court ruling on our private clubs. Very protective. But it's still enough to say that um, I don't advise taking anything that causes cancer. And I, 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 even though I know the World Health Organization is somewhat corrupt, uh, some of what they say is beneficial. They list all of these, Arumidex, Tamoxifen, as cancer-causing agents. So your medical doctor is giving you a cancer-causing agent. He's causing a, calling a hormone therapy, which it isn't. It's a hormone suppressor. And it's, it's not even a hormone. It's a steroid suppressor. And so what happened is I told this guy, I said, you're on still on a uh, um, uh, And he said, yeah, I'm still on it. I didn't come off of it. And I said, my advice is stop it. That's what I would do if it was me. The minute he stopped Lupron, his went, he went from 80-something down to 40-something in just a three or four days. Had he not done that, his medical doctor kept him on it, kept him on it. He would have shot the moon. Now he had cancer all in his pelvic area, all in his hips, everywhere. And that's the fear of getting too high of PSAs that it's all spread all through you. Remember, Dr. Jensen woke up with 1,600, and another uh, little guy I know connected to some jelly people, 2,900. Well, when you wake up with these PSAs at these levels, it's all through you. I mean, it's all through your spine and everything else. So, when you're at P let me keep reading because I don't know what he's done yet. 
But anyway, this hormone therapy isn't a hormone therapy. It's a, it's a testosterone inhibitor, and they're trying to inhibit what? An acid. Why are they trying to? Here's, here's a good question for your medical doctor. Why are you giving me a hormone therapy, Lupron, obviously? That's the one they use, suppressing my testosterone which is acidic, right? Because testosterone exacerbates inflammation because it's acidic, right? So that's like throwing a little, not gasoline on a fire, that's chemo. But throwing estrogen or testosterone on acidosis is throwing a little lighter fluid on the fire. You don't need to worry about that, though, when you go our way, because our way is we're hitting you full bore with the base side of chemistry. So we don't need to suppress anything. But in this, you are suppressing your adrenal glands, and that will make your PSAs climb, climb, climb even more. And this is, you got to be real careful. You're at a very alarming rate right now. I get it in the hundreds up here, but you need to reverse your course of action and rethink your focus. I would ask you to do me a 40 day grape and lemon diet right now. Start tomorrow. Go out to the store tonight, buy you a bunch of grapes and lemons, and do a combination of a lemon grape fast because, man, you are in trouble. And you want to take care of this, and by removing the prostate at these levels isn't enough because you might already have it in the spine and some places, so you don't want to take any chances here, right? Uh, I have continued until recently when I went to the Hippocrates in Florida. Good. At least you went somewhere like that that hopefully educated you to what you were doing wrong in June and July 2014 for a month and religiously continued their dietary program for about a year. Yeah, but they don't know how to get rid of these things. They, they, they suck. No offense in that way. If you just want to go over and do some green juices and stuff, do a little fasting, beautiful, fine, enjoy that. But not at this level, not at these levels. You don't go to Hippocrates when you're involved in a, a PSA of 77. That is spinning your wheels. Yep, they, they're not into the fruits or anything that you need to, and they don't, don't know the limb system and how that works. Right? I have been a vegetarian for all my adult life and have been eating a diet high in sprouts and green juices since then. I remember Victor Kambinkas, uh diet into the 21st century. Remember that one? Sproutitarian. I remember between him and David Wolf and some others, they were having an argument of which is better, fruititarian, sproutitarian. It's like, eh, come on. As long as you do raw, that's good. But if you want to dig in and go into that body deeper, or you want to rebuild the nervous system or bust tumors, you don't do vegetables. Period. The scan I had in September last year compared to the one in March this year indicated the cancer is still spreading in my lymphatic system, still mainly confined to the pelvic lymph nodes. Okay. Get them out. You want to get on a regimen right now of the herbs. You want to buy into at least the first kit if you want me to write you one up. So 150 smacks or go on the 14 week protocol. Probably have me write you one or hook to a counselor and get your butt moving. Who is this? Uh, Jonathan. You want to get going, Jonathan. Don't mess around with this. I get these pelvic lip nodes because the longer they're inflamed, the harder those lip nodes can get, the more in trouble you can get because you get those lip nodes too hard, you can't, you're, you're done. Or you deteriorate them. How are you going to move lymph? There's no magic here. There's a system that this all moves through. And that system is the lymph system. It isn't cancer spreading through the lymph system. This is your, this is the system you're in trouble with. This is the system that you have stagnation with. This is the system you're in trouble big time with, and the kidneys are your main focuses, kidneys and adrenal glands. So if they're still in the pelvic lymph nodes, hurrah, 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 now kick it up another notch. Do at least 40, just do at least 20. You know, just bite the bullet, bro. Bite the bullet and head on down this world. You did some good things at the properties, but that was short-lived. Now you want to take it to another level and get this done. I was also told just before Christmas that my oncologist no longer considered radiology an option. Not that I would have accepted her offer anyway, nor would I entertain the idea of chemotherapy. Yeah, it's a risky uh, in my lifetime. I have just completed a 26-day water fast. Now you're thinking. 
Now you're on the right track, Jonathan. Now you're on the right track. He just completed a 26 day water fast and I'm currently refeeding. My PSA has actually risen while I have been on the fast. Possible. Don't worry about that. Don't worry about that because you're pulling these proteins out. Don't give that a thought. Keep on going from 55 to 65, but possibly as a result of not taking the hormones. Yeah, that too. Can you can have you can hit a little bump with that, but don't worry about that. Don't worry about that one little bit. Keep yourself focused. Now jump into a grape lemon fast. Then you can do just lemons. Play with this. Do a dry fasting. Make sure you make sure your kidneys are filtering. If not, Jonathan, hit Hildy's site. Do a 24 hour day uh, dry fast. Open up those kidneys and really get yourself moving. And you'll pull this PSA right on down. At least you're not up at the 77s anymore. And it'll come right on down here. Let's see. While I was fasting at one stage last summer, I got down to seven. See, you're going to win this day, my friend. You're going to win this day because you woke up. You decided to take care of yourself. You woke up to the reality of the medical thinking and what where you were going with that. You did a great job here. Keep it hitting hard with this. You want to get on the herbs, bro. You don't play with just diet with these things. You want to get on the herbs for the kidneys and the adrenal glands. This will clean you up twice as fast. Get on the herbs for the kidneys, the adrenal glands, clean up the bowels, get your lymph nodes. So you want two lymphatic formulas, one capsule, one lymph node. I would do probably lymphatic five capsules just for one month and lymph node three to start and then get back on lymphatic one. You don't want to stay on lymphatic five more than a month. Very, very strong. But you also want to clean that bowel wall. <clears throat> you know, I keep working this way. Okay, what herbs would you recommend to support my in my journey back to health? Those ones. I'd go after my adrenals. I'd go after my kidneys. I'm definitely going to go after the GI tract with that. Uh, you could take a prostate, oh, basically because they're anti-inflammatories. But truly, the real key is the kidney filtration. Real key is kidney filtration. Uh, work on the endocrine glands. See if there's any. Look at your eyes. See what else you need to work on. But really want to hit this really good here with the raw and what you're doing. Even moving to a limit. But if you've got your PSAs down to seven, you're home. You're going to make this. You'll be okay. You just get this Lupron out. You get all this crap out. You reinstate adrenal function, kidney filtration, and you're going to win the day, bro. I am under decided whether to continue with the hormone treatment. It's not that, but it is the same thought. All thoughts. My thoughts on any medical intervention is you get yourself in trouble. No way. You, what you suppress today, even though you might think it's an acid like testosterone, is your nightmare tomorrow. And to suppress testosterone, you have to suppress that tissue which produces it. So you're actually suppressing prostate and adrenal tissue. Well, that's the tissue in trouble. So no way do I recommend that whatsoever. You, you're talking about children out there that have no idea what they're doing when they're playing with these hormone things. These, these guys have no idea. You protect yourselves. Each and every one of you protect yourselves from the cruelty of what's going on out there. Do you have any other recommendations for me? Thank you for so much time. Kind regard, Jonathan. Just those things, my friend. Just those things. You know, get your kidneys busted open. Get yourself a filtering. The prostate's right there. It doesn't take long once that takes place. Uh, your diet should be fruits, berries, and melons. Stay right there for a while. If you have to, the water fast, a good take. A dry fast for 24 hours, good take. Do a 10-day, 20-day, 30-day. I like a 40-day grape and lemon diet. That ought to clean you right up and be done with that. But you're, you're on your way. Now you're on the right focus. You're doing the right thing. Clean that up and you'll be good. Really good. Make sure your lymph nodes are opened up and clean, though. You don't want any swelling of the lymph nodes anywhere. If, they're, if they haven't got hardened and you open that up, you are home, baby. You are home. All right? <clears throat> Ooh, I've got them. I've got time for one more. All right, this is uh, from Adam. Adam Cartwright. I remember Adam Cartwright. That was Bonanza, a little Joe Owen. Oh, I am a psoriasis sufferer. Ooh. And as with most of us, we read a ton of information and get confused to know what's the right thing to do, as there are people claiming healing on various different approaches. Yeah, but you know what? Uh, I don't know how people can, can say some of those things on some of these approaches that they have. 
you have all, when you look at the body simplistically you only have one system down my friend and that's your lymphatic system so I get with that you just have to have faith look at my videos on the skin and all this and get with what we're saying and if, if you get with that and you understand that and it rings a bell follow us but follow us wholeheartedly and you're going to look worse before you get better we're going to tell you all these things because when you start detoxification this is regenerative detoxification most people that are telling you can fix this has no clue of the lymph system and how to fix it so you really want to have a broader sense i don't care which approach but get bigger broader sense of understanding of what you're up against you're up against high acidosis you're up against a skin that's not filtering properly and kidneys that are not filtering properly and you don't fix those psoriasis will be the worst uh, the least of your problems because you're going you're talking about systemic acidosis systemic acidosis on the brain not fun strokes all kinds of problems with that uh, Alzheimer's dementias uh, vision problems uh, on and on and on with that so you can just go on down this ride you must understand your lymphatic system I remember once I had this uh, she was about 19 no, that was another one. This, this, this is another one. She was only about 16. She lived at home with her mom, 16 years old. And I tell you, I felt so sorry for her. We have her pictures. But she was so bad, head to toe, that when she moved, she split, cracked. And you guys know what I'm talking about. Cracked and bled. And everywhere she walked was a path of scales. I hit her hard. I threw her in the ocean. Because you want to use salt bass to help with the symptoms, of course. And then I went honked hard on her lymphatic system and kidneys. I Don't quote me, but two or three months later, she's all gone except the fingertips. Except the very fingertips. Funny to see that. So it was amazing to see how fast she cleaned that up. I had a guy from Texas once, I was talking about, he had it so bad on his chest, he was oozing pus like whipping cream. Oh! nasty it took me about six months to a year to get that guy cleaned up because it was it was chronic it was so bad so it depends the level you're at and all that to how you fix this up but you always want to understand your lymphatic system and the kidney connection to that and what the skin actually is to understand it you have to understand the role of your skin what does it do for you what's its connecting link to the rest of the body all of these things and that'll lead you right into kidneys the third kidney leading into the lymphatic system and into acidosis my question is about eating fruits with fat such as almonds or that or a spoonful of coconut oil. I've read that it slows down the absorption of the sugar, which I've read say some say is a good thing. Well, Adam, I know. You know, some people have opinions, weird opinions from weird places. Why do you want to slow down carbon? That's your that's how you get energy to the cell. Remember ATP, ADP, AMP? This is how you get your, your, your phosphates to the cells. So you, you don't want to slow anything down that way. Plus, your your fatty acids are absorbed in a whole entirely different system. Your sugars go right into the blood system. Your fatty acids go into the lymphatic system, remember? So a different system entirely where your lipids are involved in. So I really don't see any connecting link to that. Um, the fruits, though, uh, I'm not, you know, the fats will only help you with symptomology with that. Fats are antacids. So uh, on a fatty ketogenic diet, you, you could look a little better, but it has no curative value to it whatsoever. And then you can worry about ketosis, which is another form of friggin' acidosis. So the bottom line to this is you've got a system that's not filtering properly. You've got a system down. It's a sewer system, and you can see it out the skin. Uh, it's red, it's acidic, it's nasty, and you're breaking down your skin tissues at the same time. So you're, you're just, you're killing your body with acids. So you understand the kidney connection, the adrenal connection, get onto that, get your kidneys filtering, just like we've been talking about with these other cases. Do your little dry fasting, pop that kidney open. You know, go to rawfig.com or go to some of these sources or call the clinic and get yourself focused on this. Yeah. Because you really want to go fruits, berries, and milk. I wouldn't even mess around with this. I wouldn't even mess around with psoriasis. Because every day you're breaking down more skin, more tissue. Uh, the body's back is still backing up inside. No filtration. This also might go to look at the thyroid. Basal temperatures under the arm. You might want to look at that. I don't care if you have a little coconut oil. Who cares? A little uh, 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 gungy oil, so to speak. Who cares? But 
you want fruits, berries, and melons. You want to open up and hydrate your body. You want to get this lymph system uh, hydrated and filtering and moving on its way through your kidneys and skin. So even though you might not like it, you want to sweat, sweat, sweat. You want to filter, filter, filter urine. The other thing is I would use salt baths to buffer. Get Celtic Himalayan or real salt and buffer your body. Buffer that acid because anything base will cool you down and buffer that. That's how you know it's acids. So that's what I would do to help you with that, my friend. Thanks, Adam, for your question there. Thank all of you. Beautiful questions. Really love all of these questions and love you guys. Thanks so much for your time and work on yourselves. I appreciate your love and gratitude. Back to you a hundredfold. Um, let's just keep getting people well. The journey is going to get more interesting. A lot of things happening. So you're going to be real proud of us and what all, everything's going on here. So. Love you guys. Hello, my dear friends. I just turned off the camera from our, the last uh, Q&A here. And I was taking it over to Chris's desk. Jennifer handed this to me. And this, this just... Uh, um, this shows you what we're up against with social media. And it also it gives you some idea why the Dalai Lama and why some of the spiritual beings that just look at the human race like, you know, tough race, you know, uh, this race lacks humility, truth. So that's what we're to show. We're to show honesty and integrity. We're to show the level of healing that we're at, that we can provide. We can show the high awareness that we can give, the integrity that we have amongst each other, the love that our group shares with each other. That's, these are powerful points for a world in chaos to see. Uh, this world is a warring planet and very much in chaos. And I think it's up to us, the spiritual people, at least more spiritually awakened people, to come in and give the light and the love to people. But you always have these humans that come up with stuff. And this was posted on one of my videos here, and uh, we, we, we are going to address this. I told you that I was going to address everything that sent to me as an accusation. And when you do this, for me, it just makes the people involved look... It just shows where you're at in your consciousness. And it's just, it's not a very high level of awareness, no offense. But when you say stuff like this, it just shows that one, you have a, 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 there's some reason you're saying this that who knows what it is. Uh, you're jealous, you can't get your stuff together. I don't know what it is. Let me read you this one. This is from Wendy the Runt. So I can see where that, that sounds like a made up name. So it could be any anybody saying this but this is typical and you can even have the FDA I heard and other people you know sitting out there people putting in things like this all the time but I don't let anything stand no matter who says it so it's enough to say most of you know me for all these years but Wendy the Runt says wasn't there a few women coming forward with claims that Dr. Morris had sexually assaulted them you see when someone comes out like that uh, that shows how low of a level this, this individual has trapped themselves at. You know, these are all spiritual beings, but they've locked themselves into these low levels of, of lies and deceits and stuff like that. And you have to ask yourself, why? You know, why do people want to, you know, and that's part of the negative forces. And when you see people like this, they get, they don't realize, this poor soul doesn't realize she's now, a, she's being a channel for the negative forces. And she could have an entity sitting right on her. You know, who knows? You know, we're at war here on this planet, and they are going to try to stop us. And this is kind of the people that try to do that. You know, they try to bring out this kind of information that has no basis in fact or anything like that. I have never uh, sexually assaulted anybody that I know of. You know, I have been married three times, though. I've been married and divorced three times. But that's the, the road of the way it is, you know. But it's enough to say that this is a, this is like 
ridiculous. But, you know, to me, it sounds like someone that's just putting their name in. There's a lot of disgruntled people who don't get what they want. They, they throw their little tantrums, uh, all these sort of things like that. And we're, we're not involved in that. We're a civilized group of people. Because if the world doesn't see it, if the world sees us like Wendy, then you just lost all credibility and everything else, Wendy. You, you can't be credible with statements like this. It shows how ignorant you were in that. So it's not that I'm going to send my, she says, don't send my attorney, your attorney on me. I will always send my attorney on you when you slander me. Because I, we, I have tried for 45 years to build a solid, strong reputation of love, of healing others, of showing this world what we have to offer. I was sent here to do this. And I won't let anybody stop me. You have to realize that. I'm here and I've got a lot of help now and a lot of you guys came with me. You know that now. You're waking up. We're working on the inner plane so you see a lot of this. And people like this, we cannot be in our way. These are these are souls that are lost in being channels for the negative forces and it's like sad. Really sad to see that because this poor soul has got to now live in that world and come out of that because energy directed is going to be energy right back. I don't take energy in. I let it go right back out. So when someone sends negative energy to me, it goes right back to them. I'm not going to accept that. And I'm not going to accept lies. And none of you should. You know, we live in a world where there's nothing but lies, it seems like. Even, even the fact that this is duality is illusionary at one level. But it's enough to say that your, your continence, your, your, your beingness shows where you're at, level you're at. The people that come up with bizarre stuff like this or do this just to, just to get noticed or something, or just to throw a little wrench into something, that's, that, that, that's, that's what this level has in it. You don't see this in the higher levels and heavens and stuff like this. You just don't see that. The, 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 the species are always much nicer, at least in some of these higher, most of the higher levels I've been. But you get some negative species. There's no question about that, especially the lower you get into the God worlds of creation. Like this, this level here, the pendulum of duality swings pretty, pretty far both ways. So it's enough to say, though, that all, all you guys uh, that have these type of problems, go, go on a fast. Go clean your body out. Get your minds opened up. Because you're, you're trapped in these levels. And accusing others of bizarre stuff like this, is, this doesn't do you any good. Because there's no facts behind any of that. So sad to see that there's people out there like that. Particularly in our field because our field used to be the field where you could go to see the honesty and integrity. You go to a spiritual meeting, you had all spiritual people. They were honest. They were, you, that's where you felt kindred souls, so to speak. In the natural health field, people used to didn't steal anything. But I had a $60 bottle of apricot kernel oil in my health food store. And I just had it sitting out on the shelf. Somebody probably fingered that right off. And I, I realized, because I've always been straight from the heart, I was raised that way, I've never had any other approach to me. And so it was, it, it, it shocked me for a minute that people could steal. But I was a young lad at the time, and I, uh, I, I couldn't believe that. Stealing is one thing I have a real hard time with. I don't like thieves. You know, people work hard for their stuff, they deserve it. Uh, if you don't want to work, then you get what you get. So I don't, I don't like thieves very well either. I like honesty, integrity, forthrightness, that sort of thing. Do I like the female race? I love the female race. I was raised with my grandmother, my mom, and my sister. And my grandfather was my dad because my biological dad took a hike. So I, I had a, a grandfather uh, farmer, uh, Chrysler dealer. Uh, he had all kinds of stuff, and I had all kinds of work constantly. So our play was work growing up. But my dad was extremely strict on integrity. He wouldn't accept anything less. And my grandmother was so honest that if you, she caught you lied, you got thick soap on your mouth if you didn't get your, your hands whacked because she was a school teacher. And she didn't take, she didn't put up with dishonesty and that sort of thing. And I don't like it either. We don't, we don't allow it in our company. Uh, we don't allow anything like that. 
We only try to hire people that have good vibrations. And if you don't, God spins you right out of this company like so fast. You can't, we, we were going to, oh, look how fast they didn't stay. And then we see why. Because the truth comes out. So I've always had God and the power of the, the, uh, of, of the spiritual giants on our side to help make this come true. This has been uh, part of the, the essence of what this plane has to needs in its, in its uh, future. And so we have to work toward that. So, Wendy, I'd suggest that you, uh, you know, rethink your, your thinking and, and get, get, get with the beautiful people. Get all that negativity and judgmental stuff and uh, the, the, whoever you are. Whether you're Wendy the runt or whoever you are, it doesn't matter. That is limiting your experience in life. That's keeping you confined to those thoughts and ideas. And they're untrue. So you're living a life of untruth. Of course, you could plant those words. That's easy to do. But you have to realize that I'm always going to come protect this, everything we've done here with, this, with everything I've got and with the power of the universe. Let me tell you. This is a this is a big thing going here, and you are bucking a lot of uh, things. So all I can say is I love every one of you, and Wendy, you too, honey. But you just got to watch what you say. You can't put lies out there if your name is Wendy, and even if it's not, and you're out there trying, you're 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 working in the negative fields, and you might want to change that because you could be spinning a while, and it's only you going to suffer. I don't take any of that in. Thank you. Uh, my relationship with uh, women and men are, I, I love every human, but I am much more of a spiritual guy. I'm a God lover, 100%. I'm a God man. I, that's what I do. I, I come to places. I'm a way shower, and that's what I do. That's my total love. I have 100% dying love for God, period. I'm extreme, what they call, one guy, master said, you're an extreme God lover. I said, yeah, I'm an extreme God lover. For a lot of reasons. But it's enough to say I love you guys. And uh, we all need to work together as a group, a powerful group, because we're changing a whole dimension, not just the globe. That energy is going out with all these levels. So we need all you beautiful individuals that have hearts of honesty and integrity and love. Those that don't, they'll wither away by the wayside and their lives will be what they will be. We want ours with love and integrity and beauty and joy. And that's what we want to give the world as well. This world is so locked in corruption and people like Wendy who are lost in these sort of accusations against people and stuff like this, they do not know what they're doing to themselves. But from my standpoint, thanks for uh, joining us and becoming a, 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 a tremendous channel for helping this world. Everyone you help out there is just raising the heart of the folk. And it's always good to, to help some suffering soul. Suffering has never been the answer, you know. But again, thanks for tuning in and taking your precious time and your hours to learn and grow. If I'm throwing spirituality in everywhere I can to try to bring us all up to another level, because we always want to be positive, and we always want to be in the now. And who cares? We don't want to accuse others. We don't care. Let others do what they're going to do. But when you're this mean, then that's going to be addressed. That's all there is to it. So there's no reason to be mean to us because we're a good group of people. And we have helped a lot of people get well. So with that, I hate to end uh, this video on that, but it's enough to say that Go out and help others as you guys are doing. It's so neat to see everything that's coming through here. All the people that are getting their remedies. You guys are incredible. And your questions are so good and on point. Well, I'm finding so many of your questions now. Questions we really need to ask. And questions like the like the scar tissue, which we, we really haven't talked to. We talked about eating up scar tissue before. But we've never really talked about C-sections and stuff like that. So these are all important things for ladies because of the adhesions and all the nightmare crap they can go through because of doing things like this. So, you know, well, again, I appreciate every one of you for joining us and, and, and growing and opening up. And, and, and it just brings the, the, the power of God that much stronger to a suffering world. That's all I can say. 
So love to each and every one of you. Thank you again from the bottom of my heart and all our spiritual beings too. They're here working diligently on all levels. Many of them are coming to you at night, taking you out. I remember the lady we're talking to, her two spiritual guides, she had two of them popped right here, popped right here. And look at that, it says we're waiting. So it's just like it's cool times to be awake. Cool times to be awake. Not so cool to be a Wendy. Love you guys.